around this TCU football program here in Fort Worth and another big crowd is expected on a beautiful Texas summer like night for an important game of the Big 12 West Virginia three and one against the three and one Horn Frogs of TCU right back here for game night in Fort Worth. And here we go West Virginia won the toss they want the ball so West Virginia will take the ball on offense even though the offense has not so far been the strength of this Mountaineers team I you talked about in the open though Brock they do get their starting quarterback there he is number six Garrett Green coming back on the field he played the first two weeks and then early against Pitt hurt his ankle and did not play at all last week. West Virginia managed to win both those games without him, but I think they're happy to have him back. Oh, uh, they're certainly to happy to have him back. When Garrett Green is on the field, this offense just operates in a little different way behind that e elite offensive line play led by Zach Frazier. They've been running the ball well. That's sort of become one of the signatures of this program. And he's going to throw Green is on the first play of the game. Preston Fox, who's been a productive wide receiver with the catch, a gain of seven on first down. I think you're going to see a lot of pass plays like that tonight for Garrett Green. At five foot 11, anytime you can get him outside the pocket, it's going to help with his vision. It's going to help with his accuracy. I think he feels very comfortable outside in those run pass situations where he has the option to tuck the football and go get yards. The big tailback, CJ Donaldson, had a nice game against TCU last year in Morgantown. Is going to get his first carry of the night, and he gets stopped short of the first down, about a yard short. Or so these two teams have played dramatic games in recent history. It seems like you get entertaining football lately when these two match up. Last year was no different. This is going to be a great battle to watch tonight. These third and short situations. This West Virginia offensive line against the stout TCU front. And right before the play was snapped. Timeout West Virginia. So they didn't West like Virginia. the way that looked. And Neil Brown and uses his first timeout time less than a minute into the game. Something you never like to do early in a football game as a head coach. You want to be able to hold those timeouts, you know, closer to the end of the second quarter just in case you're in a driving situation. But it is paramount and extremely critical for this West Virginia offense to get off to a good start tonight to be able to control the clock pick up first downs and try to keep that TCU offense on the sideline fifth year for the head coach Neil Brown it's funny how this happens and I think you got to give coaches some credit because Neil Brown's back he's a wide receiver his background a lot of Mike Leach concepts air raid type offense he and Sonny Dykes have known each other for a long long time and yet the identity of this West Virginia team these last couple of years has really been more about running the ball and power football. Coach Dykes was actually Neil's position coach when Neil Brown was a young wideout at the University of Kentucky many, many years ago. Hand off after the timeout, and uh, Donaldson had nowhere to go. Namdi Obiizer has been playing really well at the linebacker spot. Jamoy Hodge also was in on the play. It's fourth down. I'll tell you what, Jamoy Hodge at the linebacker position, number six. You'll see him just scraping over the top. First one to make contact with the running back. He has been playing at an elite level this season, one of the captains of the team. You're going to see him make a lot of plays tonight for the Horn Frogs. So that's disappointing for West Virginia, especially after you use that timeout to get the right play called. And then you don't get it. So fourth down, he'll punt the ball away. And not a real booming punt with some pressure. The ball was loose and it bounced right to a horn frog who is going to bring it out. And they're going to, I think they're going to stop the ball back around the 30 yard line. So TCU will have the football. Just a strange return there. It hit off the back of the punt returner, JoJo Earl, right off his shoulder pads. What a fortunate bounce that was. Very fortunate. That's a situation as a punt returner. You need to be yelling and making sure all your teammates get away from that football so that situation doesn't happen. So they do get the ball. Chandler Morris, you mentioned him as we started our broadcast. Whose dad, of course, I think most people know, Chad Morris, a head coach here in the Dallas area, SMU at Arkansas. Chandler actually won the job before last year, hurt himself very early in the season in week one. We know what happened from there. TCU had a magical year. But for a kid who won the starting job before last season coming into this year, 
very little playing experience for Chandler Morris. Little playing experience at the college level, has a ton of experience at the high school level, starting multiple years. And I tell you what, Chandler Morris is really starting to find his footing in this offense. This is his fourth different system at the college level in four years. But don't forget this. As he's had some growing pains with some turnovers, some red zone issues, he also leads the Big 12 in total offense per game. Going deep down the right side, incomplete. Trying to hit his wide receiver, Dalen Wright. They let him a little bit too far. It'll be second down. I, you know, week one, we talked about week one as a team for TCU, but I think for Chandler Morris, too, in that new system, there were some weird moments in that game seems like he's cleaned a lot of that up certainly and there was a lot of situational football in that game and I tell you what as a quarterback it takes almost an entire year in a system before you really feel comfortable in it Chandler Morris is only a couple games in and playing great football perfect delivery across the middle JP Richardson's going to take it all the way touchdown TCU 59 yards and you can't deliver the ball better than that right in stride it gave Richardson a chance to just catch it and go JP Richardson and Chandler Morris have a one of a kind connection roommates off the field Chandler Morris's go to receiver just popping a little inside slant into the zone defense of West Virginia finding the perfect hole in the zone defense JP Richardson doing the rest after the catch. Took less than a minute for TCU to get in the end zone after their defense came up with a stop. The extra point is up and good, and the Horn Frogs could hardly have asked for a better beginning to this game. And I think exactly what you've been talking about with Chandler Morris seems like he's coming into his own. TCU is a high powered offense. They can score in the blink of an eye, and Chandler Morris getting it going early. 70 yards for TCU in less than a minute and the Horn Frogs have the lead 7 nothing here at home they're calling it a blackout night all the fans wearing black shirts the black uniforms for TCU on the field and an important game early in the Big 12 calendar both these teams three and one overall one and zero in conference play TCU will kick the ball deep here after the quick touchdown. It'll be a touchback. And before West Virginia gets the ball again, let's go into the playbook presented by IKEA. Credit Chandler Morris here for taking advantage of the zone defense. The West Virginia Mountaineers are trying to play safety. Aubrey Burke circled on your screen. The leader at the back end for the Mountaineers. This is a play he normally makes. He's usually a sure file, file tackler on that back end of the defense for the Mountaineers. But J.P. Richardson just running a terrific inside slant route, taking it to the house. So now the West Virginia offense back on the field. It went three and out on their first drive. C.J. Donaldson will get the ball, trying to find a hole, and he gets out to the 30. So a gain of five on first down. It's not the style of West Virginia to play from real far behind. They, it seems to me they have to stick to the way they want to play. You're exactly right. This is a football team that wants to control the clock. And how do they control the clock? Behind that front five. This is one of the best, if not the best, offensive line units in the entire country. They want to run the football and they want to limit the possessions that you're going to get offensively because they control the clock. In this league where everybody seems to sling it around, the only team that averages more more rush yards and pass yards. West Virginia Donaldson again trying to push forward up the middle. That's going to be another third and short situation. And that's truly by design. This West Virginia team has called twice the amount of runs as they have passes this season. Even their quarterbacks they like to get involved in the run game. Yeah both of them Garrett Green and I, I don't think Neil Brown would be playing Garrett Green tonight if he weren't healthy enough to use the run game as a big weapon. You're exactly right. That is exactly what Neil Brown said to us. This week in production calls he said listen unless Garrett Green can use his legs and he's 100 percent I'm not putting him back out on the field. So third down and two yards Green in the shotgun is going to give the ball to Donaldson and he does lean forward remember it was a touchback so we know exactly how far he had to go he had to get across that 35 and he did. Well, let's go down on the field to Kayla. Guys, I spoke with Garrett Green's trainer, and he tells me that Green is 100%. He is good to go. I watched him in warm-ups. He was doing different agility 
drills and he's out there, they would not, as you mentioned, put him on the field if they didn't find him to be 100%. So no limitations on that ankle. Now they have a young quarterback, Nico Marchiol, who played and it wasn't always perfect these last couple weeks, but they won both games. Kind of a tough young kid they think could be a big part of the future of the program. Donaldson again gets the ball and just stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Oye Wale coming in for the defensive front for the Horn Frogs from that edge position, number 97, bringing down the ball carrier. If TCU is going to continue to bring their safeties down into the box and have those linebackers playing downhill, playing run, at some point, West Virginia is going to need to call a play action and take a shot down the field to soften up this secondary. Saw Nico Marchiol over on the sideline. He'll be ready to come in if need be. Play fake and a pass across the middle, bobbled but caught, and a big gain into TCU territory. Devin Carter, who might be the most talented wide out, they need a lot more from him. That's a good start. They do, and that's the exact start Devin Carter needed coming off a game last week. Neil Brown really called out his skill position this week for the Mountaineers and said, we need more out of you guys. We need you guys to help our quarterback. Devin Carter at 6'3", 215 pounds. Needs to have a big night from the wide receiver position. Uh, a minute ago, we showed those numbers for the freshman quarterback, Markiel. Not all of that was on him. Those numbers would have looked a lot better with better wide receiver play. There goes Green, scrambling, and that speed inside the 10, and he'll go all the way. Touchdown! Nobody ever got him. Garrett Green all the way to the end zone and West Virginia is an extra point away from tying this game. What a play by Garrett Green. You can see the extra element he brings when he's on the field. He's extremely dangerous with his legs. Great vision down the field. The three receivers to the right kind of got jumbled together. There was nowhere to go with the football. Green did the next best thing, tucked it, and you can see the speed by the quarterback. First rush of 20 or more yards allowed this year by TCU, a defense that you've talked about has been so much better the last few weeks, but a 35-yard touchdown run, and the extra point is good. So West Virginia did panic after the terrible start to this game, and now they've got it all tied up. Just a big 12 heavyweight title fight. Hey, we're going to match your blow. You put seven on the board. Garrett Green says, hey, I can tuck the football too. Finds the end zone. Seven to seven here in Fort Worth before the game. We had the microphone on the head coach of the Mountaineers, Neil Brown. Hey, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, big Mike. Keep it up, let's stack them, stack them, let's go. You still got eligibility, man, got Lee. Huh? Uh, it's, it's <laughs> we got homecoming at, uh, at Morgantown High tonight. So, oh, really? oh yeah, so I got to play you guys. My wife's got like 40 high schoolers at the house. So I don't know who's going to, I don't know, like. Y'all are doing a hell of a job, Sonny. It, there was nobody, I told you this, at Arizona, nobody was happier for you last year no, than me. I, that. I mean, uh, y'all keep it rolling. Yeah, thanks, bud. Uh, we always appreciate those coaches who are willing to do that kind of stuff for us. And Neil Brown, he is. He's a positive guy. He's easy to root for. Trying to, this is a big year for him. Fifth year at West Virginia after his team answers with a touchdown. It's. Seven to seven. Look, I know those two teams are getting a lot of the attention right now. I don't think TCU it should be counted out as a factor in this league again. They certainly shouldn't be counted out. If this offense continues to produce almost 40 points a game and the defense plays the way it does, the Horn Frogs might be back at the Big 12 title game this year. TCU scored the first time they had the ball without giving the ball to maybe their best player, Monty Bailey, who's having such a good year, finally gets a carry on the second series for TCU, and he was stuffed. Best chance to reach the Big 12 championship game. The analytics don't love TCU's chances. How about that burst from the quarterback Chandler Morris? Not as big of a gain as the West Virginia quarterback scramble, but still that's 11 yards at a TCU first down. Great job by Chandler Morris there. A little zone read inside. Notices that the defensive end, Edward Vester Ennen, crashes down with the running back, pulls the football, and you can see the wheels that the quarterback has. Yeah, as many first downs rushing as any quarterback in the Big 12 coming into this week. He might run again. He will. And Chandler Morris is going to get perhaps another one of those first downs. No, they're going to spot him maybe a half a yard short. 
We'll call that a gain of nine. This is an area of Chandler Morris's game he really wants to grow in. He's had a few situations this year where he was disappointed in some decision making that he made that led to turnovers. If the if his receivers are not going to be there downfield, he's going to do the next best thing and tuck the football. Imani Bailey with a carry, and he will get the first down. Not a whole lot more. Gain of a couple. Lee Koba has been active already. He might be the best overall defensive player these days on West Virginia, that middle linebacker wearing number one. He's a fantastic player, does it all for that West Virginia defense, flies around, plays downhill. The leading tackler for this football team. They're very polite fans here in Fort Worth. When TCU has the ball, they let their offense communicate. Play fake. Morris had it knocked down, batted down. Nice play by Hershey McLaurin. Plays that, what do they call it here at West Virginia? Spear position? The, the spear position. It's basically a third safety, but almost like a hybrid linebacker meets nickel. It's a guy that has great length. Has a great football IQ, and that's exactly what they want him in there for. They want him to be able to shut down passing windows for the opposing team. And at six foot one, 215 pounds, Percy McLaren's able to do that. You know, it's interesting because it's an important position in this West Virginia defense. They do not recruit to that position. They recruit everywhere else, and then they find the guy that fits best as the spear. Nice run for Amani Bailey, and he gets another TCU first down into West Virginia territory. Big left tackle, Andrew Coker, number 74. Great seal off. Quick tempo TCU offense, straight ahead run, and Bailey, another carry. Koba, another tackle. This is what you were talking about. There we go. Big left tackle, Andrew Coker, six foot seven, 315 pounds, just engulfs the linebacker and creates a huge gash for the Horn Frogs offense. Yeah, engulfed. He hugged him. He almost tackled him. Hand off left side, trying to go behind Coker. This time a little better defended. It'll be third down. This is going to be a really fun match within the game to watch. You take the TCU offensive line that averages almost 320 pounds and then you have them play with the tempo that they do. Let's keep an eye on the West Virginia defensive front and see if they wear down as the game goes. Third and short. Morris decided to keep it and he got away around the left edge. He'll go out of bounds. First down and TCU. That's a play outside linebacker Jared Bartlett. He's going to want back. Needs to be there on the edge for contain. Just crashes down and Chandler Morris makes him pay with his speed. Great play by the quarterback getting the edge picking up another first down nine plays on this drive. Eight of them have been running plays after they threw the ball the first time they had it. So the 10th play of the drive coming here from inside the West Virginia 25 yard line. Five and a half minutes to go first quarter. And a quarter where for the most part the offenses have dominated left side run. And that one was stopped to Monty Bailey. Just not a lot of room. There's Kendall Bryles, who's he's, he's bounced around a little bit these last few years. Seems to be very happy here at TCU. Listen, coming from Arkansas, where he's called the plays the last three seasons, doing a phenomenal job early. You talk about the TCU offense last year, which we know got to the national championship, eventually the runner up to the Georgia Bulldogs. But he's already made this offense better. They're averaging 50 more yards per game already early in the season, still as just a team is getting used to his system, doing a phenomenal job. And I think he appreciates all of those different experiences, lots of different styles of head coaches he's worked for. And that last play, though, to JoJo Earl went backwards, so it's third and long. Morris throws toward the end zone, and there was nobody there. So his receiver cut off the route. Morris threw it into the end zone, incomplete. And it's fourth down. The field goal kicker is going to come out. So a good drive by TCU, but in the end, a good hold for the Mountaineers. A little good and bad with that play. Morris did a great job of not taking a sack, losing. Oh, here we go. I think we're going to get intentional grounding. Mm. He was inside the tackle box, and there was nobody anywhere close to where the ball ended up. And it is intentional grounding. Morris trying to go up top. Receiver thinks he's running a quick little comeback route, almost a little out route to the sideline. Morris thinks he's running a go route, just not on the same page with his wide receiver. As I was saying, he did a great job of avoiding the sack and losing out on field goal range. 
but you still have to know where your receivers are going to be and if you're going to throw the ball away it needs to be in the general vicinity. Sonny Dykes wanted the referee Derek Anderson to come over and he wouldn't so now Sonny's even more mad it was going to be a 45 yard try for Griffin Kell now it's 53 he sure has the leg for it kick is on the way and that kick is no good so he pulled that one to the left and that penalty might have made the difference in three points for TCU it certainly did and that's why I was trying to give Chandler some credit throwing the football away trying to make the right decision but as a quarterback you have to know where your skill guys are can't take the intentional grounding great job by the West Virginia defense holding up. Credit West Virginia linebacker Tyron Bradley with the quick pressure on quarterback Chandler Morris. Chandler Morris trying to get the football to wide receiver Dalen Wright at the top of your screen. Not on the same page. Wright is running the out route. Chandler Morris is throwing the go route. To me, that is a clear cut intentional grounding. If you're a quarterback inside the pocket, that football has to be delivered around one of your skill guys. That ball was nowhere in the vicinity. By the way, that is a tiny slice of animated Sonny Dykes on the sideline with the head referee and some of the other officials out on the field. He was extremely unhappy with that penalty call and we, we were reading his lips the whole time. We will not repeat all the things that he was saying but one of the things he was emphasizing is you cost my team three points. Yeah let's just say Sonny Dykes and I definitely disagree on if that was intentional grounding or not and I can understand why he's so frustrated that penalty definitely hurt your field goal opportunity and your chances to get three points on the board. So it's second and four after a first down carry from C.J. Donaldson who's been the primary tailback so far. Play fake to Donaldson. The throw is intercepted. He intercepted it. What a catch by the TCU safety Bud Clark, who's turning into a superstar here with the Horn Frogs. That was an incredible job to hang on to that football. Superstar ball hawk, call him what you want. Led the team with five interceptions a season ago. Already has three on the season after that one. This kid has a knack for the football. Tremendous play, great hands, drives on the football. The question is, did he retain possession all the way through the catch? And they are going to review it. I mean, the ball is allowed to touch the ground. The ground just can't help you secure the catch. And that one, you know, from that angle, that looks like he needed the ground to catch it. I, from the other side, I thought he squeezed it, had his hands on it, and controlled it. That angle makes me a little less sure. Let's the wide After review. The defender did not maintain control and ball hit the ground. It's an incomplete pass. It's third down and four at the 41 yard line for West Virginia. I mean, there's definitely a gray area there. But after watching that a bunch of times, I do think that's the right call. I think it was, I, I do. I agree with you. I think it was the right call. You can see the football touch the ground as Bud Clark was going down to the turf. Good call by the officials. So you thought Sonny was thrilled with the officiating before that. Now they're off the Christmas card list. Third and four. And Clark and the TCU defense still out on the field. Keep an eye on the slot at the top of your screen for tight end Cole Taylor. He's been a security blanket early in the season for the quarterbacks for West Virginia. He had a good week last week. Play clock winding down. Green will get the play snapped in the pocket. Now he's going to try to run. Green gets tackled short. What a tackle there by Jamoy Hodge, who's made a couple big plays in this first quarter. Now, West Virginia, they're on their side of the field. It's fourth and one, but they are not sending the punter out. Neil Brown said he was going to be aggressive in this game. It's definitely his nature to push the envelope on fourth down. This does not surprise me at all. Well, and now they're trying to, they substituted, so the officials are making them wait. They got an extra blocker in. They may not be snapping this ball. Let's see. Still have plenty of time. Some hard counts. And are they going to burn a timeout or take a penalty? I thought I saw a Garrett Green signal timeout. I think that's a great decision by head coach Neil Brown. Run your offense out there. Try to get TCU to jump off sides. If you take the five yard penalty going back, it doesn't hurt you at all on this punt. 
I think it's smart. You're trying to test that TCU defense, test how disciplined they are. That was good situational football by the Mountaineers. Now, I could not hear the referee microphone, so I, 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 they're not moving the ball back five yards. It was called delay a game. There was a flag on the field. So TCU, okay, there we go. TCU declined the penalty. And now the punter, Oliver Straw, is out there for West Virginia. JoJo Earl standing at about the 10. <laughs> Sonny is renewing his. I think Sonny Dykes is saying nobody asked me. I didn't want to decline it. As aggressive as Neil Brown is for West Virginia, you just don't want to give TCU a short field, especially this early in the game. Good decision. Punt the football away. Good situational football. So now we can play, and Straw is going to try to angle this punt, kind of a low line drive kick, and it will be returnable. Earl gets spun around and gets out to the 20 yard line. That's where TCU will get the ball back. Well, the NFL London games kick off tomorrow morning at 9.30 Eastern exclusively on ESPN Plus. B. John Robinson, he's been really impressive. Again, Big 12 fans know very well. And the Falcons taking on Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. It's a big game for the Jaguars. From Wembley Stadium in London to sign up for ESPN Plus, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. you got to have it to watch that game from London. The Jaguars. London's team they're there every year you gotta love waking up being able to turn on the TV and there's some NFL football on Sunday. Well, TCU's offense back out there they moved the ball well in this first quarter still 235 to go in quarter number one Morris being pressured he's going to throw and he'll throw it away incomplete. Good decision by Chandler Morris. That's something as he gets more comfortable in the system you'll see him do more often doesn't want to force the football downfield wants to stay ahead of the sticks he's taking a few negative plays on first and second down early in this season and you can see already tonight his decision making has improved and you mentioned how something to watch in this game that front for West Virginia they're starting to make a few plays up front those defensive linemen that was pretty good play there to stop Trey Sanders who got the carry this time for TCU it's going to be third down and long it's going to be a lot of fun to watch that battle up front tonight you have this West Virginia defensive line that is very active physical tough gritty and then you look at TCU's offensive line arguably one of the biggest in the country they start running the football. It'll be interesting to see who wins that battle. Shotgun snap. Morris steps up in the pocket. He'll throw, and that pass is caught with a huge hit down low. And the TCU receiver hung on to the ball. That's Chase Curtis, the tight end, for 10 yards and a first down. And hopefully he's okay. He gets up limping. Ouch. What a catch by Chase Curtis. 6'5, 235 pound senior. Going up, knows he's going to take a huge shot from Bishop. Ooh. Secures the football, picks up a first down for his team. What a play. That took some guts. Again, Morris pressured. He'll throw short and a tackler right there. I think that was Bishop again. Trey Sanders, the running back with the catch for a gain of three. Well, hopefully Chase Curtis, that tight end, he started to make some plays. He, he's, he's got a really interesting story. He's become a playmaker for this TCU offense. Hopefully he's going to be all right. Senior from Pittsburgh, Kansas. A missed tackle out in the open field. And another broken tackle. What a powerful run from Savion Williams, a wide receiver, into West Virginia territory inside the 40. That's a 26-yard gain. About that play by Savion Williams. Quick play action by Chandler Morris. A lot of eye candy being presented to the defense, popping the slant in behind the linebackers. Under a minute to go handoff left side run for the Alabama transfer Trey Sanders nice gain on first down let's look at that uh, catch and run again Morris just doing a great job RPO situation you can hand the football off multiple options to throw to finding his wide receiver Savion Williams behind the linebackers 6'5 225 Savion Williams 
And he was a high school quarterback too. He's got a huge throwing arm in case you want to run a trick play. Yeah, and he's a heck of an athlete. You wouldn't think that he was 6'5", 225. The way he plays with the football in his hands after the catch, you would think he's more like 5'11", 200, has great feet, great long speed, tremendous athlete. And body type, he almost looks like Quentin Johnson who's playing in the NFL these days. So the final seconds tick off the clock. That's the end of quarter number one. And we had some Nice offense early. The defensives has started to settle in. It's an important game of the Big 12. And at the end of quarter number one, we're tied at seven apiece. Well, we start quarter number two here in Fort Worth, Texas, on the campus of TCU. The Horned Frogs and the Mountaineers Big 12 action. And it's seven to seven. TCU's got the ball. In West Virginia territory, Dave Fleming, Brock Osweiler, Kayla Burton, happy to have you with us on this Saturday night. It's been so hot in Texas, I think, for all those students, the fans, the players playing this game under the lights. I think that's a good thing tonight. It feels fantastic out. Today was hot, pushing 95 degrees. But tonight, there's a nice little cool breeze out here in the stadium. Stadium's packed, blackout. What an atmosphere for college football. Now by the thermometer, it says it's still 88 degrees, but just not having that hot sun up above. Well, listen, the guy that lives in Arizona, 88 degrees is, is a cool breeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy who lives in San Francisco, not so much. <laughs> Morris keeps it, and he's got a huge hole. Chandler Morris with a block. Morris, touchdown. The first play of the second quarter at TCU takes it 31 yards on third and short for a touchdown to go back ahead. Chandler Morris can beat you so many ways. He can beat you with his arm. He can beat you with his mind. And you see there, he has some afterburners on him. Great speed, can beat you with his legs. Such a smart football player. There's so many things on his plate every single snap. Am I going to hand the football off? Am I, I going to keep it? Am I going to throw the RPO game? Making the perfect decision there with the edge player crashing down with the running back. Great play by Chandler Morris. So TCU back ahead, 14-7. This time they're going to kick it off shorter, and it will be returnable for the Mountaineers outside the 20 yard line just a few moments ago Kayla caught up with the West Virginia head coach Neil Brown. Coach you talked about being aggressive we saw that as you have green back in the mix on that 35 touchdown run what are you seeing from him what are you telling this offense so far. Well he's playing well he's playing it taking it as it comes we got to do a better job on early downs and then we've had two third downs to really hurt us. Uh, we got to coach better I got to do a better job. Uh, we're going to be right there in it they're getting in their tempo they always start fast here. And so we got to get settled down. Red zone defense is going to be so important in this game. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Guys. And uh, technically, that was not a red zone touchdown for TCU. Throwing on the move. Well defended. Pass from Green. Trying to hit Preston Fox. Incomplete. It'll be second down. TCU's red zone offense this year has not been very efficient. No, it's definitely been an area that they've struggled in. They've struggled with turnovers, a few negative plays on first downs, but red area has definitely been a glaring issue for the TCU offense last week against SMU at home. Defense created a couple turnovers, and there was not great complimentary football by the offensive side for TCU. Looks like they fixed those issues. Of course, one way to fix them is just score before you get in the red zone, which is what TCU's done both times. Back to pass on second down, and that one incomplete. Devin Carter, the intended receiver, well, again, well defended by the TCU secondary. That was Mark Perry with the coverage. Tremendous coverage there by strong safety. Mark Perry just nowhere to go with the football, just blanketed on the wide receiver. Great technique. Garrett Green's going to have to be precise tonight to throw against this secondary. Probably not too many Mountaineers fans who are here in Fort Worth, but there are a few. Third down at 10 for West Virginia's offense. Green's got plenty of time. He's going over the top left side, and that one out of bounds incomplete. Trying to hit Hudson Clement. So just good coverage all three plays by TCU. It's fourth down. Yeah, credit defensive back Avery Helm, the six foot one junior. 
out of Missouri City, Texas, doing a great job in coverage. The thing that I like most that he does in this coverage is he uses the sideline as an extra defender. You see him squeezing and pushing the receiver to the sideline. Tremendous coverage by the defensive back. So that's a three and out for West Virginia's offense. And TCU's going to try to pressure this punt this time. They don't get there. Fair catch called for at the 35 yard line. Just a few seconds into the second quarter. Already a lot's happened in this quarter. TCU's got the 14 7 lead back right after this. We've got a 14 7 lead. Our Capital One rewarding performance. Man, their quarterback, Chandler Morris, is playing really well so far tonight. Great recognition by the sophomore quarterback on the first series of game, popping the inside slant to his go to target, JP Richardson, for the opening touchdown tonight. And then Morris coming back, recognizing that edge player, Lance Dixon, is crashing with the quarterback. No one accounts for Morris. He does the rest with his legs. And TCU's got the ball back here. Imani Bailey back in the game gets the carry left side for a short game. We asked Chandler, okay, go to guy. Who's your you know, pressure spot? Big play. Who are you going to? And he said JP Richardson. He said, look, JP doesn't drop the ball. He's super reliable. But he's also my roommate, so I have to say that. He said that, and he also said one other thing. I know he's going to be where he's supposed to be, and as a quarterback, that means everything. Ball tipped in the air and should have been intercepted and was not. Man, a missed opportunity. Two players for West Virginia. Now they're jawing at one another, Jared Bartlett and Lee Koba. Uh, somebody needed to pick that off. Two of the leaders of the defense. Either one could have taken it. Hey, you take it. I'll take it. Whatever. That's a play they're going to want back. He, he the, the throw went off the helmet of Willis Patrick the right guard. And ricocheted in the air. So what a break for TCU. This throw caught. First down and more into West Virginia territory. Jack Besh with the catch and run first down Horn Frogs. Jack Besh taking advantage of the man to man coverage played by West Virginia. Just a simple crossing route winning across the field. After the first down fast tempo Morris scrambling right throws incomplete and that one could have been intercepted. I don't think BD Bishop knew the ball was coming. Yeah that close. That's twice on this series. Yeah we call that a lucky break. Sometimes you need that in the quarterback room. Just a ball that got away from Morris. When you're on the run as a quarterback you just need to take a little bit off throw a little bit easier and you'll be accurate with that throw. So it's second and ten for TCU. This is a get back on track down second and ten want to at least get to third and manageable. Hand off straight ahead and a nice gain down to the 40 I think mission accomplished and that I think that was Cam Cook the true freshman who's been hurt finally healthy. They really like Cam Cook. He's got a chance to be a good player here. Here comes the tempo for the TCU offense. They'll fake it to Cook and swing it out right side. A nice cut. Bounce outside. It's going to be a first down. It's Mr. Reliable J.P. Richardson. That was just a great individual effort. J.P. Richardson. How about that footwork? Making multiple guys miss. Safety Aubrey Burks coming up with the first missed tackle number two. Usually he's a surefire tackler for this West Virginia defense, but J.P. Richardson had other plans. Great play. He's missed a couple tackles in this first half. Morris throws short left to his tight end. That's Chase Curtis. Good to see him back in the game for a short game. Great to see him back after that big hit in the first quarter on third down. There's a couple tight ends on this TCU team. Jared Wiley, Chase Curtis, huge pieces to this offense. Chase Curtis was a baseball player in junior college, came here as a walk on quarterback, and now he's a good tight end. Tough run, spin move, and that's that true freshman from Round Rock, Cam Cook, once again. Stops short, it'll be third down. Yeah, and to add to the Chase Curtis resume, he's also a finest for the finalist, excuse me, for the William V. Campbell Trophy, which goes to the premier scholar athlete in college football every year. That's a very prestigious award. Tremendous young man. All right, five of six on third downs, TCU. Bailey back in the game. It's third and five, and now officially TCU is 
in the red zone. And this is the part of the field that we mentioned they've had their struggles in. A lot of those struggles have been turnovers. Bailey open. And he cannot get away. That was a good open field tackle by Bishop. They're going to spot Bailey short by about a half a yard. And TCU is not going to waste any time. They're going to go for it. Quick snap. Handoff Bailey. And Bailey will. I don't think he got it. I don't think he got it either. And so TCU, I mean, you, you knew that was coming. They wanted to get to the line and go, and they did not get the first down. West Virginia's defense, how big is that? What a stop by that defensive front for West Virginia. Been playing tremendous football all night, coming up with a huge play on fourth and short. Kendall Browns might have broken something. Sonny Dykes was using some colorful language. Uh, that was a heck of an effort by this defensive front for the Mountaineers. Yeah, he didn't get it. Kendall Bryles, not that thrilled with how that went. TCU football has become big time. Man, they are packing this place. Uh, this has always been a, a cool place to come. Great fan support in Fort Worth. But after what happened last year, it has ramped up. Sonny Dykes has a chance to have some big time success for a long time to come West Virginia after the defense came up with a fourth down stop in the red zone. Now they hand the ball off to CJ Donaldson on first down great run by CJ just strong outside zone there really a go to favorite by this Mountaineer football team. The Mountaineers have had tremendous success tonight on first down running the football it's got them into second manageable and it's keeping them ahead of the sticks. So now second down and five. Another handoff. Donaldson again, left side. Donaldson stretched out and might have gotten there. Came real close. And I think they're going to spot him. That's a first down, West Virginia. Let's go down to Kayla. Well, offensive coordinator Chad Scott said when Donaldson first came, obviously he was a tight end, but they moved him to running back. He said when we physically looked at him, we knew he physically looks the part, but let's put him through some drill, drills. Let's get through some of this running back position test, and he aced those. He says he always continues to ask questions, still learning that position, but it's paying off here early in this game. I mean, it is a cool story. Uh, he's been the primary running back now for a couple of years, so it's not brand new, but... I mean, C.J. Donaldson was a wide receiver tight end. Not many of those go to tailback and thrive. Jaheim White, true freshman, who is one of the fastest players on this West Virginia team. Neil White off the field for this play, second and seven. Garrett Green healthy again this week at quarterback. Will hand it off to Donaldson, right side. Trying to find that crease, and it, it just wasn't a big one there. He got a couple yards. It'll be third and five. And that's how this Mountaineers offense wants to operate. Those short runs in the second quarter, they expect those to turn to bigger runs in the third and fourth quarter as they continue to wear down a defensive front. Like I said, this offensive line for West Virginia is certainly one of the strengths of the team, if not the biggest strength of the Mountaineer football team. It's not as big size-wise as TCU's, but... It's a heck of a unit with a ton of experience. Shotgun snap on third down. Green all kinds of time. Now throws on the move and it's dropped. Preston Fox had it and couldn't catch it. TCU defense playing man-to-man -man coverage. Garrett Green slow to recognize that his wide receiver Preston Fox coming from the bottom of your screen to your top of the screen is open in man to man coverage right away needs to get him the football earlier but shoot he's even open late just make the routine play and pick up the first down throw easy on the run make it catchable for your receiver. That running style punt from Oliver Straw and the ball muffed inside the five then picked up by Jojo Earl. And hit there. Man, that another near disaster for TCU on special teams. The, the punt return game has not been clean for the Horn Frogs in this first half, and they've gotten away with it. JoJo Earl with the near huge mistake for the Horn Frogs, able to get the full football back.
Looks like Marcus Floyd coming in the game number 24 for Aubrey Burks. And a delay for. That medical attention of right around 10 minutes and the first play from scrimmage after that. TCU hands the ball off to Imani yeah. Bailey. So it'll be second down Horn Frogs. We got eight minutes to go until halftime here in Fort Worth. There's Marcus Floyd. Really had a big, big week last week in West Virginia's win against Texas Tech. A tackle in the backfield. Man, what a play. Right into the backfield for West Virginia. And that's a guy that they really like. Tommy Duroge, not fooled for a second, very athletic. Great with his hands, getting off the block, making the tackle for a loss. So now it's third and 13, and TCU's going to be taking this snap in the end zone. Chandler Morris, got to be careful here. Pressured, flushed, and he is going to throw the ball incomplete. Man, he threw that into some coverage. That was a dangerous throw. It's fourth down. And the West Virginia defense with a nice stop. They're going to get the ball back. Great job by the West Virginia defense stepping up. Losing one of your key players to your defense. One year leaders on by injury Aubrey Burks. Not blinking an eye being stout forcing the three and out getting the football back with great field position for your offense. Preston Fox standing right about at midfield kind of a high snap but secured by Jordi, Jordi Sandy and a very short punt takes a TCU bounce but it's going to stop right around the 43 yard line that's where West Virginia will have the ball in TCU territory when we obviously still missing Cam Rising all right West Virginia has the ball green with a play fake now going to run and he just got sandwiched. I think Garrett Green thought that alleyway was a little bigger than it actually was. Yeah, Garrett Green just kind of got caught being a little indecisive there. It was an RPO. He did have an option to throw it to a wide receiver wheeling up the sideline. Kind of got in between, should I throw it, should I tuck it? You saw the result. He got tackled by a former wide receiver, one of the most unique players in the country, I think, Shad Banks, who's starting at linebacker tonight. Johnny Hodges out with an injury for TCU. So it's second down at eight. That was only the second play in TCU territory for the Mountaineers. Now Green going to take off, and Green broke a tackle inside the 30, down close to the 25. The QB run play has been a huge part of West Virginia's offense. I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with the legs by Garrett Green. Great recognition seeing defensive end number 97, Paul Oyeyeye, crashing down for the running back. Green pulling the football. He's really seeing the windows in the run game tonight. I was that was well executed so first down West Virginia 54 yards rushing plus a long touchdown already for green keep an eye at the top of your screen wide receiver Devin Carter six foot three had a big catch already in the first quarter tonight green takes a snap hands it off Donaldson right side Donaldson that big body knocking a defender backwards to get positive yardage on first down. Well, why would you throw it to Devin Carter when you can run the football like that out there on the edge? Got your right side of your offensive line doing a great job. Tight end number 81 Traylon Davis doing a great job out there blocking on the perimeter. Second down and six 91 rush yards. You saw those numbers for the Mountaineers so far play fake. Pressure picked up. Green end zone incomplete. Man, he had Rodney Gallagher out there. Incomplete. Boy, Garrett Green had Gallagher there. Completely wide open for the Mountaineers. Just a routine play. That, that's the routine play. This quarterback room for West Virginia has not been making the past couple weeks. They need to help out their stout D. They need to help out their run game. That's a throw Garrett Green needs to make. Great route by Rodney Gallagher on the out and up. Has not completed a pass in a while, Garrett Green. It's third and six. Might need to complete one here to keep the drive going for West Virginia. Green is going to keep it. Green will get the first down. Another good run by Garrett Green. Shad Banks made the tackle, but he got down to the 15 yard line. Oh, yeah, Wale there again for TCU on the edge. Big number 97. 
He understands Green's going to do this. He's Green's done this to him a couple times tonight. Still can't make the play. Keeps his shoulder square. Plays the play right. But Green's athleticism shows up, and he's able to pick up the first down. Yeah, because uh, Oye Wale is a good young player. He's a great player. He's a good athlete, and he's gotten beaten a couple times on those kind of plays. So it's first and ten. Little pitch to Donaldson. Cuts it back middle, and Donaldson... Got a couple ran about 20 yards to get two. West Virginia committed to the ground game and when they stick with it and it works usually good things happen. I mean that's a that's a, it's not like we're setting the bar at 200 or more rush yards 100 yards and West Virginia typically wins. They're getting there. In fact they're there now. Second and eight Donaldson up the middle Donaldson flipped end over end right to the five that should be first and goal Mountaineers Josh Foster might have saved a touchdown with the tackle. Just a little inside split zone left tackle number 72 Doug Nestor doing a great job on that left side sealing it off creating a cutback lane for CJ Donaldson. Great patience and vision by the running back Luke Hamilton the fullback had a good block on that play. Doesn't touch the ball much, but he's in on a lot of snaps to be a blocker. I'll tell you what, this West Virginia offensive line, fullback, tight end, everyone involved in the run game. It is just so impressive how they move the line of scrimmage consistently. First and goal. Green throws, and it hits a helmet and falls incomplete. So instead of running the ball, they throw it on first and goal and got lucky. Intended for Clement. Just trying to hit a little pop pass behind the linebackers. You've been having a heavy dose of run, trying to do the play action. You get the backers to step up. Just need to make a better throw. Defensive back Avery Helm there in man coverage doing a tremendous job making sure there's no throwing lane. So now second and goal. And you wonder what Neil Brown is thinking. Maybe three more plays to try to get four and a half yards. That's an unusual formation handoff left side and close then the ball comes out. I thought that Donaldson was down. And I don't know who came up with the ball at the end of the play. A West Virginia player did. Traylon Davis one of the tight ends. I thought the runner was down. Boy that was close. From our vantage point I thought CJ was down as well. That was close. It's close. It's really close. Because I think it, the ball did not come out here, but he spins around. I think the elbow's down. Elbow's down. Definitely not a fumble. Good call. Two tight ends, three running backs. Let's play some power football on third and goal. Handoff, Donaldson. West Virginia, touchdown. That's hard to stop. Now that's West Virginia football. Let's get two tight ends on the field. Let's get three running backs. And let's just pound it right down the middle. Let's hand it to our 240 pound running back, CJ Donaldson, doing a great job. Offensive line led by Zach Frazier and Doug Nestor. Doing a tremendous job punching that football across the end zone. Well, Donaldson. Was a little slow to get up. Now he'll come off the field. Uh, West Virginia offensive lineman Wyatt Milam also was was a little banged up on that play. How, how about the Mountaineers? Ten plays over five minutes. They had the short field. They only went 43 yards. They did not complete a pass. I tell you what, th this run game for the Mountaineers is so impressive on this offensive line. C.J. Donaldson, but then don't forget, you have one of your leaders of your team, Aubrey Burks, go down. Your defense comes out here, forces a three and out. You get the short field. You run the football all the way into the end zone. Very impressive sequence by the Mountaineers. What a scene for college football tonight here in Fort Worth. Sold out stadium, blackout for the TCU Horn Frogs. Throwing that moon in a heck of a football game. I think we're in for a special night. TCU does get the ball to start the second half, so they have a chance to drive, score, and get the ball back. This will be 
a touchback quarterback by a former West Virginia star Geno Smith who's had a long journey to where he's gotten in Seattle. He was a great player for the Mountaineers. He was a great player for the Mountaineers and so happy to see him doing so well up in Seattle. Coming back after all those years being a backup quarterback really playing at a high level for the Seahawks. Great to see. Wow I can't believe on that first play by the way there wasn't a West Virginia penalty. That, that, that looked like a clear penalty to me. Without question, Cutter getting away with one there. I know it's a light hit, but hey, any hit outside those white lines, that's a personal foul. Yeah, I thought that was supposed to be penalized no matter what the degree of the shove or hit. You're exactly right. So West Virginia got away with one there, and now after another short completion, it's third down, and for TCU, this is feeling like a must convert. I know it's a tie game, but they have designs on a big finish to the first half. They got to get a couple yards here. TCU in a check with me situation. They like to play with tempo, but every once in a while, slow it down, look to the sideline, get the right call from Kendall Bryles. Morris in the backfield will deliver first down and more and that's big Savion Williams once again. He's having a nice first half all the way out to the 45. Great field by Savion Williams finding the soft spot in the zone. Picking up the first down for the Horn Frogs. So first and ten to keep the drive going. Morris play fake. He's going to throw short and a good move upfield. A little shimmy from Major Everhart with the catch and run shoved out of bounds short of the first down but into West Virginia territory Boy, those plays make quarterbacks so happy nothing open downfield you throw it out to your check down that's covered but hey he makes the guy miss throw short run long all three timeouts for TCU so they are free to run the ball use their full playbook they get the first down which inside two minutes means the clock will stop old school style that was Trent Battle who got that carry inside the 45 first and 10 Horn Frogs Morris rolling right looking downfield heaves it downfield and it's incomplete. Wow. Going toward the end zone Blake Nowell was the intended receiver and he laid out and got some fingertips on it just couldn't squeeze it. Great coverage by Marcus Floyd stepping in for the injured Aubrey Burks. Ooh, heck of a throw just not able to track it tight coverage. Good play by West Virginia. So now he knows he had an opportunity there. Clock stops with the incomplete pass 52 seconds to go until halftime. Second and 10 TCU Morris going to step up again rolling right nowhere to go with the ball so he'll scramble and Morris trying to dive out of bounds did not get out of bounds and then TCU will use that's why you save those timeouts 42 40 well we'll see when they actually yeah. stop the clock great job by Chandler Morris nothing open downfield getting some pressure inside by Tommy. Gets close to getting out of bounds. OU playing much better defense than last year, and Dylan Gabriel playing at a very high level. Oh, OU's capable of winning that game, no doubt. Throw across the middle, and that one it was almost intercepted. <laughs> Koba, who's had his hands on a couple Chandler Morris passes. And now it's fourth down. That was third and short, so. Now what does Sonny Dykes want to do with 35 seconds to go. Good on good there on that third down middle linebacker Lee Koba on starting tight end Jared Wiley at six foot seven 260 pounds. That's a throw that Chandler Morris just needs to put away from the defender and let his tight end go and make a play on that football. So they're going for it. Morris throws and caught across the middle inside the 10 touchdown. With the catch.
catch and run on fourth down in the final seconds of the first half. What a big play that is. That is exactly why this Horn Frogs offense is so dangerous. Just when you think you have them bottled up, they are able to make explosive plays at the snap of a finger. Chandler Morris, great job under pressure, keeping his eyes down the field. Finding Dalen Wright on the end cut. Dalen Wright going cross court for the touchdown. That makes your head coach look good. You got a field goal kicker who's got a huge leg, maybe the biggest leg in college football. You were in his range. Why kick when you can do that? I think that was a statement there by Sonny Dykes to his team. He wanted to see them have success in plus territory going for it on fourth down. Chandler Morris doing a great job sliding away from pressure, finding Dalen Wright downfield. Dalen Wright going all the way cross court on the end cut. Perfect throw, great strike point accuracy. You're able to see the speed of Wright. Right at the bottom of your screen, just running a basic end cut, a little high-low read for Morris. Morris doing a great job keeping his eyes down the field, attacking the zone defense, finding the holes the Mountaineers present. I love that last shot because it really does show you the picture for the quarterback and how relatively long it took for that man to come open, and he found him perfectly. Yeah, those end cuts, they take a while to develop down the field. Chandler Morris doing a great job staying calm in the pocket, keeping his eyes down the field, just feeling the pressure and sliding away from him and delivering a strike to Dalen Wright. Now, fair catch on the short kickoff. 24 seconds to go until halftime. West Virginia with two timeouts sort of goes against their nature to kind of go for it here. No, if I'm West Virginia, I feel good about how my team played in the first half. We're in a good spot right now. Hand this football off, get to halftime, regroup, make some adjustments, and come out for a big second half. But they do have a field goal kicker who's got some legs, so we'll see. TCU gets the ball to start the second half, and they're going to delay handoff it. Straight ahead run for the true freshman Jaheim White. And they will they will use a timeout after that play. You need about 25, maybe 30 yards to have a realistic shot at a field goal. Green looking middle. Now he's gonna run. Green's gonna sprint toward the sideline and he will get there to stop the clock outside the 40. That, that took a while to get only what six or seven yards, something like that. But they do save that last time out 10 seconds on the clock so you you can run another play over the middle of the field and that's the key you still have one time out left you can throw the football anywhere in the field of play the key to this situation though is you got to get the ball to your hand quick you cannot hold the football you do not have time to do that yeah that last play took nine seconds to get those seven yards 10 seconds until halftime green Again, just waiting, throws, and that one is caught, and we'll see if West Virginia gets the timeout. They do. So the quick timeout, as the play was going to stop anyway with the first down inside two minutes, that's 24 yards, and that is, I mean, it's sort of the, the long end of field goal range for West Virginia, but it's there. They can try. I love the situational football execution by the Mountaineers there. Good snap and hold. Hayes. And they did West Virginia get called for a penalty? Ball start. Oh my goodness. Number 58 offense. Oh that five yard penalty. Replay fourth down. That cannot happen. Nick Malone, the offensive lineman, moved. So now, I mean, does Neil Brown send the offense back on the field or try to kick from five yards longer? Unfortunately, I think you just try the field goal from five yards longer percentagely speaking Even though you're kind of maxing out your kickers distance right here You have a better chance of making this field goal Than completing a Hail Mary. I think he made the kick by the way now That that really stings now TCU I thought when the play was stopped that TCU had used a timeout it turned out to be a penalty 
to make this a 58 yard try. TCU's got a man back short of the goal post just in case. Kick on the way and that one is no good. So the penalty that that cost points. We had two different penalties in the first half one on each side that you could say wipe three points off the board. You're exactly right earlier the intentional grounding by Chandler Morris led to a missed field goal. And now the false start by Nick Malone less led to a missed field goal for the Mountaineers swapping three points or a lack of three points. I should say. West Virginia as a team went a long time without a completed pass and a huge play for TCU at the end of the half on fourth down to get a touchdown. That's the difference in the game. TCU's offense will come back on the field before that though. Let's go down and get an update from Kayla. Dave, we just saw a very scary sight right before that the end of the first half where Aubrey Forks went down, parted off the field in that stretcher with an injury. I'm told he's been taken to Texas Harris Health Methodist Center, just about two and a half miles from here. And he's going to continue to be evaluated. I am in touch right now with their team doctor, doctor so I'll continue to update Duke once I learn more. But we pray and hope the best for Audrey that he's okay. Yeah indeed. Thank you Kayla uh, Aubrey Burks uh, leader on this West Virginia team. Hopefully he's going to be okay. We had about a 10 minute delay in play in that first half to take care of Aubrey the West Virginia defense on the field here to start the second half and a handoff for the Horn Frogs on first down. It feels like uh, West Virginia hanging in there down by seven. This feels like a big sequence though for their defense. You and I talked about it Brock in the first half. They're not really equipped to play from behind big. I totally agree. It's right now the feeling is what gives. Is it TCU's offense that's going to take over the game or can the Mountaineers find a big stop and get the ball back for their offense. A lot of catch and run for TCU and their receiver group Dalen Wright who had a big touchdown catch in the first half. Gets that one for a TCU first down. Tell you what, it's a physical game tonight. It's getting a little chippy down there on the field. You've seen on a couple plays recently, a little pushing and shoving, some John going on back and forth. I think we're in for a physical fight in the second half. As JP Richardson, who went in motion, Morris is going to scramble, but he can't get away. He's going down. Back at the 35, that's a loss of three, a sack for the Mountaineers. Edward Vester Ennen, I tell you what, this guy is active from his defensive tackle position. Plays with an extremely high motor. There's no quit in him. Had a huge game last week at home against Texas Tech. Following it up tonight down here in Fort Worth. Not a whole lot of players from Finland in college football. He's one of them, and he's good. Morris again having to scramble and the ankle tackle by the linebacker Lee Koba. That'll be a second straight sack for West Virginia. Couldn't be a better start for West Virginia in the second half. The key to stopping this TCU offense is getting them off schedule on first and second down, which is exactly what they've done. Bringing the blitz, middle linebacker Lee Koba, number one, tripping up Chandler Morris. Great play by the linebacker. So back to back negative plays and now it's third and 19. Four man rush Morris steps up throws and that one knocked away incomplete was going to be short of a first down anyway. So the Mountaineers defense gets off the field almost immediately one first down. But now the punt coming for the Horn Frogs. What a great defensive stand by the Mountaineer defense playing really good football this season. They play as a team they're gritty they're tough. Cornerback Beanie Bishop making a great play on the ball there on third down, getting the football back to the Mountaineer offense. Preston Fox, the hometown kid, the punt returner. That punt was pressured, a very short punt. Fox, I'd say very short, not that short, but Fox came up about 10 yards, made the fair catch, and the Mountaineers offense is coming on the field down by a touchdown when we come back. And he, he, he didn't even know that Garrett Green, the starting quarterback, was going to be healthy and good to go. Wait till that guy meets Pat after the game. Handoff on first down for Jaheim White. Now there is a penalty flag down. Big gain, but this one might be coming back. 25 yards if the play stands. I don't think it's going to. 
Neil Brown not happy. That's a 10 yard penalty oh. added to the end of the run. On, First the, down. on the defense. Wow, West Virginia was going nuts. They were sure it was against them, and it was not. Sometimes the ball bounces your way. Tell you what, the most impressive thing right now about West Virginia, everybody in this stadium knows they're going to run the football, but they're still able to do it. And I think that's a credit to the entire offensive unit, the offensive line, the tight ends, even the receivers, everyone involved. You see the hold there on big number Dominic Williams, 52, the nose tackle. Not a call you see every day, but it's definitely the right call. So Jaheim White, the big gain plus the penalty yardage, that turns into like a 37-yard play. White's going to get the carry right side run and going sideways this time. He'll lose about a yard. That That's the point. I mean, we, we, we're smiling with Pat McAfee. He's going to pick his Mountaineers no matter what on game day. But that's the point he was trying to make. It might not be pretty with this particular West Virginia team, but they're tough guys. They can run the ball. They want to muck the game up. And even though they're being outgained here tonight, they're doing that against TCU. They're tough. They're super gritty. They want to impose their will in the trenches with the offense and defensive line, and that's certainly what they've done through two quarters of football. And their fans enjoy a good beverage. Green goes down. Got hit hard, and he lost a half yard. So two straight running plays that go backwards, well defended by Shad Banks and TCU. It's third down. Now, this is not where you want to be if you're the Mountaineers. Third and long against this great TCU secondary. Makes it tough sledding. Great play there by Shad Banks coming up from the linebacker position. They empty the backfield. Looked like a design run, and Green got away. There was a defender there, but still too far to go. Could not get the first down across the 30. Green did a good job to get something positive there. And now let's see what Neil Brown wants to do. It's going to be fourth down, and what about five or six? And he's not bringing the kicker out on the field. This surprises me. This is a great TCU defense. Not like this is fourth and one, fourth or two. You got to think from this distance, you feel good about your field goal kicker, able to get some points early in the third quarter and take some momentum. But Neil Brown keeping his foot on the gas. Fourth down and six for the Mountaineers. Big play early in the third quarter. Green takes a shotgun snap. He'll throw and it's knocked down incomplete. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. And football's become a big part of that. This, this football program is flying high. Hand off right side in West Virginia there. Another tackle for loss for the Mountaineers. That was Cam Cook, the true freshman. Ben Cutter had some help, but the true freshman linebacker for the Mountaineers made the tackle. Coming up, making a great play from the second level. Just nowhere to go with the football. Great penetration by the Mountaineers defense. And the spear, Hershey McLaurin, was in on that as well. Here comes some pressure. Morris got hit. Throws incomplete. Some fighting downfield. There was some contact intended for Nowell. It'll be third down and no flag on either end. I think the TCU fans at Taco Bell student section, they wanted a penalty in the backfield and down the field. Linebacker Lee Koba forcing the quick throw by Chandler Morris, blitzing from the middle linebacker position. I know the fans think that was pass interference, but I think Malachi Ruffin did a great job down the field. Both guys fighting for the football. Good no call. Good no call on both ends. I think the hit on the quarterback was legal. I agree. So now it's third down and 11. Morris pressured again, and he got away. Then almost intercepted. He got rid of the ball as he took a hit and threw it behind his intended receiver. And McLaurin, I might have been thinking about the end zone. And that's the third would have, could have, should have been interception that the Mountaineers have dropped. Well, who else would it be causing the pressure but Lee Koba once again from the middle linebacker position? Just a five man rush ultimately by the Mountaineers. Oh my good. You got to catch that ball. You got to catch it. But also on the flip side TCU their offensive line. They need to figure out some calls and start tracking Lee Koba. Uh, he's he is wreaking havoc. You're right. Fox did not signal fair catch and he got to the right corner. Then that's gets a late hit pummeled out of bounds. My goodness. Uh, a definite flag. 
I mean, TCU fans are upset, but yeah, you cannot do that. There was no gray area on that one, so that's going to be an extra 15 yards. Number 72, Lot. I think he's the guy who put the hit on on special teams. Just no excuse there for that play. Fox was clearly outside the white lines. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Number 17, Kennedy. 15 yards out here to the end of the play. Automatic first down. Time out on the field. So 15 yard return, 15 yard penalty. I, I know everybody here is unhappy, but I mean, he's two, three yards out of bounds with that. Talking about Dylan Gabriel earlier, we saw him firsthand have a monster game at Tulsa. He's had a great career. Sort of underrated, I think, these days in college football. West Virginia gets the ball back with good field position between the punt, the return, and the penalty yardage. 16 yards net of field position for TCU. That's all, giving the ball back to West Virginia. Yeah, and what tremendous field position for West Virginia to start out the drive. They need to capitalize on this. Their defense have been playing their tails off. They made some plays from on special teams. As an offense, if you're going to continue to hang with the high-powered TCU offense, it's time to find some plays down the field and get back in the end zone. Garrett Green, the quarterback, will fake it to Donaldson. Now rolling left, looking to throw. Instead, he'll switch the ball to his left hand. And get taken out of bounds inside the 40 down to the 39 by Jamoy Hodge. Just nowhere to go with the football there for Garrett Green. And this is something the coaching staff said this week. They said, listen, our skill players need to help our quarterbacks out. And right now they're not. On that last play, there wasn't a single wide receiver downfield that created any separation. I, I think, you know, we showed that fourth down play when West Virginia last had the ball that got knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Even if it hadn't been knocked down, there was nobody open. You're exactly right. Coverage was tight. No separation. It's a big issue right now for the Mountaineers. Third and six. Somebody's got to get open here. Play clock winding all the way down. They're not going to throw it. They're handing it off. And Donaldson gets hit hard. He, I mean, maybe got a yard. Maybe. Shad Banks, another good play from his linebacker spot. So now what does West Virginia do? You're in no man's land. A punt doesn't net you many yards unless you pin him inside the 10. But Shad Banks. From his weak side linebacker spot, making plays constantly tonight. Six foot one, 250 pounds, flies around, plays with a great motor, smart football player, making big time plays. He asked Chandler Morris, who's the best athlete on your team? He didn't hesitate. Shad Banks, he said he's a freak athlete. Across the middle and a low throw, but that one was caught. Wow, what a catch by Hudson Clement for a West Virginia first down. Great job by the redshirt freshman going down to the dirt. If you're West Virginia, quickly run a play. Do not give TCU time well, they, to review this play. They blew it because they substituted. Can't do it. If you hadn't substituted, then you would have been able to get the ball snapped quickly. Now, it might not matter. Yeah, that's one as an offense. You don't substitute. Even if you are pretty darn confident that that football was caught, you run up, you run a play really quick before TCU has a chance to look at replay. Green back shoulder throw, and what an effort, but incomplete. That's the true freshman, Rodney Gallagher. Could not get a foot down. That was close. I want to go back to that fourth down play and give Garrett Green some credit. This is the throw on first down. Looks like those toes are just off the gr ground. Close. Maybe got a blade of grass. It's close, but going back to that fourth down play, I want to give Garrett Green a lot of credit. He had his tight end, Cole Taylor, wide open over the ball. Cole Taylor got tripped, fell down. Green didn't bat an eye, moved on his progression. Huge fourth down pickup. So now it's second down. They'll throw a little inside sort of screen play, and that's a nice positive gain for Clement coming back toward the football and then barreling his way upfield. First down. And look who's out in front leading the charge. 54, Zach Frazier, the center for West Virginia. Finalist for the Remington Award. 
Tremendous player on this West Virginia front. Said he likes to pull, get out in front on counter plays. You see him out there on the screen, getting out in front, leading the charge. There's not a better center in the country than Zach, is there? Tell you what, he's a heck of a player. He was a lot of fun to visit with this week, and he has a bright future on Sundays in the National Football League. First down, handoff, cut up the middle. Nice run. Another young player, Jaheim White. So West Virginia told us we need to get some of these dynamic young athletes a little more involved, and they're doing it. Yeah, they certainly are, and they're doing it behind an offensive line that just created a gash that you could drive a Mack truck through. Yeah, there, there's that too. Get the young guys involved, but let the old guys up front create some opportunity let, for them. Let them lead the way, but you can see what Jaheim White can do with the ball in his hands. He's got a little extra gear that maybe the bigger backs don't. A lot of young skill for this West Virginia Mountaineer team. They're controlling this third quarter. It's first and goal. And the handoff left side trying to hit that hole. Penalty flag thrown right in the middle of the field. White again. So that, that might be a ill time penalty against West Virginia. Although last time I thought that it was against the Horn Frogs. Holding number 52 defense. He did it again. A penalty's half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. The same guy, Dominic Williams, who's called for the same penalty. Two in this quarter. I mean, you almost never see a hold against a defensive lineman. And that's the Sonny Dykes has been unhappy about the officiating all game long, and he got flagged. A penalty flag was thrown on sportsmanlike conduct against the head coach of TCU. He was unhappy about the defensive holding call, but Brock, I think it was a good call. It was a great call. Dominic Williams cannot grab offensive lineman Zach Frazier, who's trying to climb to the second level. You are not allowed to grab and hold as a defensive lineman. So the ball moved halfway to the goal line. It's first and goal, handoff, no. A keeper and Green lunges, touchdown West Virginia. So that's his second rushing touchdown of this game. The TCU fans are unhappy, but we watched the sequence. The holding call was the proper call, and West Virginia takes advantage. They're an extra point away from tying this game. Boy, what an impressive drive there by West Virginia. We said that they needed to take advantage of the short field position given to them by their defense and special teams play. They did take advantage of that. Garrett Green made some great throws. There were some great runs in there, but it was all truly led by that offensive line. Another short field drive that took almost five minutes. That's the, the Pat McAfee game plan. Just grind them out, make the game a little ugly. Now we're getting some shoving. There's a West Virginia lineman down at the end of that play. Dominic Williams, I, and, and West Virginia is calling for the trainers to come out. Third quarter that's been dominated by West Virginia, even though TCU got the ball first. What does TCU have? Three yards of offense in the third quarter. They will get the ball back here. Kick return coming and outside the 20, close to the 25. It's hard not to think what that win would mean for Duke. That ball knocked down on the first play of this drive for TCU. Hershey McLaurin has been everywhere in these last couple sequences for the West Virginia defense. Great recognition by Hershey McLaurin there. Not fooled for a second. Great eye discipline, making a great break on the football in front of tight end Jared Wiley. The TCU offense. They're going to get rolling. They have to find success on first and second down. And more pressure coming. A screen set up and well defended by West Virginia. What a play by Mike Lockhart. He saw that coming, and he wrestled the pass catcher, Imani Bailey, to the ground for a loss. Tremendous play by the big fella. You're going to see 93 Lockhart diagnosing the screen play. He feels the offensive lineman. He recognizes what's happening, runs down the line. Makes a huge play for a loss. I mean, with that loss, does TCU have net zero yards in the, I think they have net one yard in the third quarter. This is the third time they've had the ball. Morris throws. That one is almost intercepted. Man, another great play on the ball by Beanie Bishop. It's fourth down, and TCU's going to punt the ball away again. Bishop playing a heck of a football game. I tell you what, we said it in the open. West Virginia's been playing great defensive football through the early part of this season. Chandler Morris, nowhere to go with the ball. Beanie Bishop 
Great job diagnosing what TCU is trying to do, making a break on the football. You got to remember, West Virginia, this is a defense that a week ago held Texas Tech that is known for offense, two for 18 on third down, doing a great job again tonight. Another punt return here for Preston Fox, who's a good return man. He's, he's helped West Virginia get some field position in this quarter as well. All that to say, nobody's surprised. A little end around for Rodney Gallagher, who just could not quite get to that corner with enough burst. He got a couple yards on first down. You bring up a great note about last year's game. It was 34-31 late in the game in Morgantown. TCU leading. West Virginia had a ball, had a chance to make some plays, went three and out. TCU gets the ball back, goes down and scores. They put a stamp on it, 41-31. You know West Virginia is trying to come down to TCU's home turf tonight and get some revenge on last year's game. Second down and eight. Donaldson alongside Green. And they'll fake it to Donaldson. Green looking middle. Instead throws to the right side. Incomplete. Just not a lot of room there for Cole Taylor, the tight end. It's third down. No, great job there by safety Mark Perry on the tight end. Cole Taylor just... Really nowhere to go with the football. The entire secondary for TCU. They played really great tonight. This is a team that prides themselves and how hard they practice throughout the week to be prepared for game day. They have a two whistle system in practice. So they do their job and then everyone runs to the football. You see that effort paying off tonight. It's kind of amazing that this is a 21 21 game. Uh, West Virginia's not had guys open all game long. Green throws and that one is caught. What a catch. Even there, Cole Taylor wasn't really open. It wasn't a perfect throw, and it was just a terrific catch by the tight end. Cole Taylor using all of his 6'7, 250 pound frame, working in man to man coverage, covered by Mark Perry, the safety that had just made a play. Ball slightly behind him. No big deal for the big tight end. So that's a big gain of 17 yards for the LSU transfer who's really started to emerge for Neil Brown's team. A West Virginia into TCU territory final two minutes of this third quarter that has been thoroughly dominated by the Mountaineers another throw and a little slant pattern was read perfectly trailing Ray true freshman who's going to be playing more and more it sounds like just had nowhere to go. That's something you see week in and week out by this TCU defense. Any of those quick screens or those quick little smoke RPO throws outside, kind of those now routes to those receivers, TCU tries to jump on those to make sure that those plays don't get started. Second down at 10. There's been a little reshuffling on the line for West Virginia with Remack not in the game. Another pass play, and this time completed across the middle with a big hit, and E.J. Horton held on to the ball. Clean hit, but what a catch by Horton. Best throw of the night for Garrett Green. Delivers the football, hits his back foot, gets the ball out on time. Strike point accuracy. Tremendous catch by E.J. Horton. Taking the big hit by Bud Clark. Oh, Horton, who's known for his speed, but that, that play showed a lot of toughness. Under a minute to go, third quarter. West Virginia on the move again. Green in the pocket, throws middle, caught! Inside the five, and Clement would not go down. Touchdown, West Virginia! Josh Newton in coverage like you said one of the best defensive backs not only in the Big 12 the entire country. Oh I think it touched. Yeah it did you see a little skid of grass pop up right underneath that knee. After review the runner's knee was down with the ball at the five yard line. It'll be first and goal at the five. There's a it's real close game clock play clock West Virginia is going to run a play at the end of the quarter Donaldson straight ahead. Got a yard. So what more could you ask for? We're going to go to the fourth quarter here in Fort Worth, a conference game, two three and one teams. Third quarter dominated by the Mountaineers, 129 yards of offense, 
to one. TCU ran 11 plays and gained one net yard. We had to round up to give them 0.1 yards per play in the third quarter. And now West Virginia is four yards away from taking the lead as we start quarter number four. Dave Fleming, Brock Osweiler, Kayla Burton. Glad to have you with us here in Fort Worth for a Big 12 game that's turned into a really good one. Tight end in motion as the fourth quarter starts. Green's going to throw to the tight end, caught and dragged out of bounds, short of the goal line. So Taylor with the catch, but an excellent tackle by Abe Kamara to wrestle him out of bounds. Kamara been really playing a great game tonight. In man-to-man -man coverage with the big tight end Cole Taylor. Taylor definitely has the size advantage at six foot seven, 215 pounds. Excuse me, 250 pounds. Kamara there to make the play. A well, third and goal. You figure West Virginia is going to run two plays to get it in. They're missing a starting offensive lineman, Tomas Remack, who was injured on the extra point a few minutes ago. Third and goal here. Under center. Green handoff. Donaldson trying to fight his way. And he didn't get there. He got stopped about a half a yard short. Hodge and company pushed him backwards. So now Neil Brown has the decision to make. I think he's made it. Neil Brown's not even hesitating. This is absolutely four down territory. Credit the TCU defensive front for just exploding off the ball, creating penetration. Nowhere to go for C.J. Donaldson. And this crowd is into it. Fourth and goal, handoff, and Donaldson stopped. He just had nowhere to go. West Virginia and their power football up front, they could not punch it in. Dominic Williams, the big nose tackle for the TCU Horn Frogs, having a couple costly penalties tonight, making up for it though on the fourth down goal line stand, just firing off, creating penetration and forcing the huge stop, getting the ball back to his offense. Left side of the West Virginia offensive line beat up tonight, and they got picked on in that sequence. TCU, what a stand. It's first and goal, West Virginia, and they did not punch it in. So the game still tied. TCU, though, it's been a long time since they moved the ball on offense. A play fake, and they throw it out to the right side, a little quick hitter, and they get some breathing room. That, at the start of that play, it didn't look all that promising, but a nice gain to Besh. Good job by Chandler getting the football out. He knows he has to make a quick decision, try to help his team get off the goal line. Great job. Bailey gets the carry, and that'll be a TCU first down. And Monty Bailey, the leading rusher in the Big 12, has had a very quiet game. Yeah, I think it's time to give Amani a big dose of this football. You've struggled on first and second down in the second half, finding positive yards. Hand the football off to Amani Bailey and let him run behind this big offensive line. He has touched the ball 14 times, just not a lot of production. Play fake, deep shot, left side incomplete. Trying to hit Savion Williams. It'll be second down. Good coverage from Ruffin. Only two first downs in the second half to this point for TCU. Well, and, and, and you're seeing why on that last play on first down, Chandler Morris has his receiver Williams in a man-to-man -man situation. Give your big wide receiver a chance to go make a play on the ball. If you're going to throw the football like that, it's time, like I said, hand the ball off to Imani Bailey. He leads the Big 12 in rushing yards per game and let him take over this football game. Instead, second and 10, Morris rolling left, squares those shoulders and throws. Might have been caught, but it was out of bounds, so that's an incompletion, and it wasn't caught anyway. And this is exactly where you don't want to live. This, this is where the struggles continue to happen. You don't have success on first down. You don't find a completion or positive yards in the run game on second. And you find yourself in another third and long. It's amazing, isn't it, how West Virginia, they've not had to really blitz or send a lot of extra rushers in there making Chandler Morris move around. No, the front's doing a great job of being disruptive, and the secondary is blanketing the receivers. They do send an extra rusher there, and the pass incomplete. It's fourth down, so TCU got one first down there, but they're going to have to give the ball right back to the Mountaineers, and Sonny Dykes cannot believe what's going on with his offense. It's moments like this when your offense is sputtering, when you're trying to find a first down. you got to go back, 
to what you do best. And right now, that is run the football. Yes, Chandler Morris has had a great night through the air, throwing for over 200 yards, two touchdowns. But the core of your team is running the football with Imani Bailey, your quarterback Chandler Morris, behind the big offensive line. That was an interesting shot we just showed. Short punt, Fox fair catch in TCU territory. West Virginia didn't score at the goal line, but they get the ball right back. Tie game, 12 20 to go. Back to Fort Worth right after this. It was interesting. We were showing that shot. Thank you, Kayla. Mountaineers start with the ball. They're going to flip it back to the wide receiver who gets a block and cuts it upfield. And Rodney Gallagher, deeper into TCU territory, shoved out of bounds at about the 32. A gain of 15 plus. First down, West Virginia. There's another one of those true freshmen. That Neil Brown wanted to get on the field tonight, get the football into their hands, and you can see why. Great speed coming from the true freshman wide receiver. Justin Johnson, the running back who pitched it back on the reverse to Gallagher, and it worked. 12 first downs in the second half. Only seven points to show for it, though. Play fake. Green, nowhere to go with the ball. So he's going to scramble, and he'll slide at about the 30. So that protecting himself, which is not a bad idea, gets only a yard. Smart play by Garrett Green. No one open downfield. Wide receiver Devin Carter you could argue he was getting held. But nevertheless, nowhere to go with the football. Garrett Green being very smart, not forcing it into coverage, tucking the football. He's done a great job tonight rushing the football almost 80 yards on the game. Last time West Virginia had it, remember the touchdown was overturned with the replay. So they had first and goal on the five, and they didn't score. Now a tackle in the backfield. Johnson couldn't get away. Tripped up and lost a yard. It'll be third and ten. Linebacker Jamoy Hodge doing a great job from his middle linebacker position. Shooting a gap, being very disruptive. And then his buddy, Namdi Obiazor, coming up and making the tackle. Hey, once again, West Virginia's kind of in this no man's land. A field goal from here would be a tough one. So you figure they want to at least get some positive yards on this third down play. Carter in motion. Pressure comes. Green will scramble. There goes Green trying to bounce it to the right side, and he goes backwards. Man, if he had kept just a straight ahead run, I think at least would have gotten another few yards and now he's slow to get up got to run forward find positive yards either help out your field goal or make it difficult on your head coach to go for it on fourth down and I you know that right ankle that was hurt against Pitt he got up favoring that ankle I think he tweaked it again so that that's a double thud for West Virginia now a 49 yard field goal try to take the lead of the fourth quarter. The hold, the kick on the way, and that kick is good. Somewhere, Pat McAfee's got a big smile on his face. <laughs> Michael Hayes, never a doubt, right down the middle. That was an impressive kick from Hayes to put the Mountaineers ahead, but concern, I'm sure, for Garrett Green. That was, that was a perfect strike, wasn't it? Right down the middle. Great kick. Great operation, great snap, hold, kick. First lead for the Mountaineers on the road comes with 9.31 to play. The, the, the theme of the year for West Virginia has kind of been, it may not always be pretty, but winning football games are three and one. This is a football team that embraces winning ugly. They will win in any way, any shape, any form. They're gritty and they're tough, and you're seeing it play out tonight. Wow, the kick returned and ending up getting back to the 20-yard line. I, I think Major Everhart's teammate was saying, take a knee, we want a touchback, and he brought it out anyway. So TCU's offense, the, the bigger issue is not the kick, it's can TCU's offense Get going. You're exactly right. It's really been keep away all night. 
in the second half for the West Virginia offense, keeping it away from the TCU offense. TCU not able to sustain drives. Stay, 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 stay. Oh, wait, now I got to go block because you're, you're ignoring me. <laughs> Look at those numbers. 11 yards net in the second half with two first downs for this Horn Frogs offense. Morris back to pass. Throws short right Bailey a little juggle but he made the catch and then breaks a tackle hangs on to the ball after a big hit. It might have hurt Sean Martin the West Virginia defender his own teammate. Might have. We, we've we've done a lot of this for all the domination West Virginia uh, they only have the 10 points on the board in the second half so from TCU's perspective. They're only down three despite almost nothing going right other than the goal line stand for their defense. By the way Hershey McLaurin who's playing a great game. He was the other West Virginia player involved in that collision that sent Sean Martin off the field. Martin did get up and walk off the field on his own power but McLaurin also on the bench. That's a first down run by Amani Bailey. This was the play that hurt two different West Virginia defenders. After the broken tackle. Oh. Now on first down man Bailey has just decided he is going to try to personally drag TCU's offense back in this game. That's eight yards on first down. How about that Savion Williams six foot five 225 pounds. Catching it short running hard. Tough sledding in there making a play for his team. So Bailey and Williams two tough plays in a row hand off to Bailey and he hits the hole gets out to midfield first down Horn Frogs if Hershey McLaurin's out of this game he, he's got seven tackles two tackles for loss two different pass breakups and just assume that they're faking it I'm with you there there's a big difference between feigning an injury and a real one up the middle big hole and another Nice gain on the ground. The TCU run game with Imani Bailey has come to life. That's what you were talking about last time they had the ball. Why isn't Imani Bailey getting more touches? And now another West Virginia player is hurt. Oh my goodness. Big number 73 at right guard, Willis Patrick. You see on the right side, just purely dominating linebacker Lee Coba getting up to the second level, creating a huge hole. For Imani Bailey, who is sparking this offense in the fourth quarter. And look, we just saw it. Trey Lathan, the redshirt freshman linebacker, that is not a fake injury, and these TCU fans are booing him. You saw him talking to his defensive teammates. You know he wants them to stand up right now and play hard. Back to football. TCU play fake and then Morris goes down. So that West Virginia defense, Jared Bartlett, who plays on the opposite side at linebacker from Trey Lathan, who just got carted off, comes up with the sack. How about that play by Jared Bartlett? Not fooled for a second by the play action. On the left side of your screen, just coming off the edge. Beating left tackle Andrew Coker. Huge play for the Mountaineers. A second and 15 loss of five Morris a design quarterback run trying to kind of pick his way forward with a blocker out in front and he got the lost yardage back plus maybe one. So it'll be third down here. Part of the field where you might see TCU they have a good reliable strong legged field goal kicker but it could be four down territory. Yeah, Chandler Morris needs to be smart with the football here. You have a great field goal kicker with a big leg. Make a smart, quick decision. You cannot take a sack. Obviously, you can't turn the football over here late in the game. Make a good, quick decision with the football here. Be smart. On third and nine, and now a flag thrown. I think a wide receiver moved for TCU. That's ball start, number 16, offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Dalen Wright, who's had a really good game. But he knew he made a mistake there. Dalen Wright getting a little antsy. I think he sees the motion by J.P. Richardson, sets him off. 
right here for Chandler Morris so any completion is a good completion get the ball in your skills hands let them make a move get you back into field goal range or possibly pick up a first down play clock winding down and they just barely got the ball snapped Morris throws on the run that pass is completed and very close we'll see where they spot the receiver in forward progress short short by maybe a full yard or yard and a half. So Wright came up with a catch after committing the penalty. Now TCU does not want to go fast. They may want to have a chance to see whether this spot was the correct one or not. And they're going to run the field goal team out there. So now you got to kind of hustle the operation. We know from past experience TCU is good at this and Griffin Kell can handle this. But a field goal try coming from 46 yards or so to try to tie the game play clock winding down they get the snap the hold and the kick is blocked and really I think it just went straight into the line so the kick blocked and TCU comes away with nothing and I don't know that they, they were not particularly organized I know last year they pulled it off against Baylor but the kick team ran on late and nothing felt comfortable about that. No, you're exactly right. It just didn't feel right for TCU. I know you want to hold on to all your timeouts as late as you possibly can in the ball game. That might have been a situation there where Sonny Dykes wanted to burn one of his timeouts and get his unit set. Great. Yes. That, Mike Lockhart, Lockhart, excuse me, big 93 with the penetration there, getting his hand up, six foot three. What a play. Yeah, emphatically rejected that field goal try. So another miss for Kell. And now West Virginia has the ball with the lead. Donaldson, right side run. Donaldson, powerful run. Outside the 35, the clock moves. The clock is going to become a factor even with just one more first down. You're exactly right. And I can promise you. West Virginia is not going to be in a hurry to snap this football. They're going to snap this football inside of three seconds on the play clock. They're going into four minute offense mode right now. Well, they would love for this game to end and they still have the ball. We'll see if they can pull it off. TCU's defense badly needs a stop. Donaldson again straight ahead. Donaldson got close, but pushed back about a yard and a half short. The run game, if you pick up a first down here for the Mountaineers, you're really going to be able to either bleed this clock or force Sonny Dykes to start burning timeouts. And it's one or the other if you convert here. I'd expect TCU to bring pressure here, try to fill every gap. West Virginia only has three two on the play clock and they do get the ball snapped Green's going to throw rolling out and it's incomplete knocked away. So kind of the worst case scenario for West Virginia the clock stops you don't convert it's fourth down and they're going to have to punt the ball back great play by safety Bud Clark number 21 he'll pop into your screen late being there in coverage just. Garrett Green nowhere to go with the football trying to give his guy a chance low and away. What a stop by the TCU defense. Yeah Bud was not fooled at all. Big smile on his face after a huge play. With 3 8 to go. And the punt end over end fair catch signal inside the 15. That's where the TCU offense will get the ball. West Virginia defense back on the field. Let's go down to Kayla. Guys, West Virginia's Hershey McLaurin started walking slowly off the field into that locker room. I assume he is done here for the night. Yeah, I, I, it looked like he was being checked. It looked to us, now we're a long way from the sideline, but looked to us like he was being checked for concussion symptoms. Now, as TCU tries to run the first play of the drive, ball start, number 74, a penalty. Offense. Five yard penalty, first down. One of the most experienced players on this team, Andrew Coker, committed the false start. Great player for the Horn Frogs, big athletic, somebody you're going to see play on Sundays. That's not the normal play by Andrew Coker. It's a seventh TCU penalty. So it's first and 15, and the ball's inside the 10. Morris, play fake. 
Morris looking for somewhere to go with the ball and now trying to get away throws across his body and finds Bailey with the catch in the middle of the field and he gets close to a first down what a play by Chandler Morris what a play is correct Chandler Morris just an absolute baller running around out there making plays keeping things alive eyes down the field tremendous job because that one looked like it was going nowhere that play literally went nowhere on second and short. I, I take it back. They give him the spot for a half a yard and a first down. Chandler Morris, nowhere to go with the football, scanning left to right all the way across the field, using his legs once again to extend a play for the Horn Frogs, finding his running back, Amani Bailey. I mean, the clock shouldn't be an issue. Normal TCU tempo with all three timeouts, but that clock is just rolling. And the Horn Frogs still have a long field ahead of them. Morris. Throws that pass is caught. What a catch by Savion Williams. First down, Horn Frogs. Great location of the throw, putting the football where only his big six foot five, 225 pound receiver can make a play on the ball. Tremendous catch. And just under two minutes, the first down means clock stops to get reset. Big hit on the quarterback, and Morris delivers it anyway. Out near midfield, that's his go to guy, JP Richardson. Way to stand in the pocket, fearless Chandler Morris. Linebacker Lee Koba bearing down on him, delivers a strike. Well, first and ten Horn Frogs from their ten to midfield. Another ball pressured, and Morris, that was a really dangerous throw. Again, Koba was in the backfield. And that's the gunslinger and Chandler Morris. He's just going to have to learn to harness a little bit. There's a lot of time left in this ball game, minute and a half. You have all three timeouts in your back pocket on first and 10. If it's not there, do the next next best thing with the football, either tuck it and run or throw it away. It's been so much tougher for TCU's offense in the second half. They need three to tie. A touchdown would put them ahead under a minute and a half to go. A little pitch play right side and a crease. Big run into West Virginia territory still on his feet. That's Major Everhart. First down Horn Frogs 13 yards. Great run there. I love it. Amani Bailey the lead tailback for the TCU football team switches to lead blocker on the last play. Bailey. Oh I think he was thinking big there. He hit the hole hard and Koba saved a bigger gain. So the clock still moving and TCU is going to use its first of their three timeouts. 102 on the clock. Bailey in the backfield. Morris in the pocket. Morris now will get sacked. And we'll see if Sonny Dykes he's going to use a second timeout. So that's kind of the worst case scenario there. Richardson in motion. Morris. Morris will take another sack. He tried to fling the ball up. I thought he was down. And I think they're saying he was down. Sonny Dykes wondering what's the call. The ball was just flung up in the air and Morris is hurt. So the clock Cry will wind. And now Sonny Dykes, I guess he's going to have to use his third and final timeout. He will. After review, the quarterback got the pass away before he was down. It's an incomplete pass. Game clock operator, please put 46 seconds on the game clock. They're trying to tie the game with 46 seconds on the clock from 55 yards, Griffin Kell. And it's blocked again. West Virginia blocks another one. And the Mountaineers I, are scrambling after the ball. I don't know why West Virginia went to go touch it. All you got to do is just stay out of the way. And the kick was blocked. Big and West Virginia has the ball. Big Sean Martin, who almost had the sack on third down. Gets his big mid up. What a play by Sean Martin, six foot five, getting his hand up. Wow. 
second block field goal in the last couple minutes for the West Virginia special teams unit and that essentially is going to put this game away. Unbelievable. What a statement by Neil Brown and his West Virginia Mountaineers. He said this week in his press conference that this game would be a barometer for where his program is at in Big 12 play. Well you just came down to Fort Worth and pulled off the upset tonight. L losing two players carted off the field down several other top line players on the offensive line on the defense against a team that played for the national title last year and this is going to be the first loss in Big 12 play for Sonny Dykes at TCU. Unbelievable what a performance by the Mountaineers coming into hostile territory. This crowd was loud. It was a sold out stadium. Defense played lights out quarterback Garrett Green back in the lineup making the plays when he needed to huge plays with his legs in the first half. What a statement win by the Mountaineers really. really